The four sijans often like to point out that the Buddha gained awakening in the forest. He taught his first sermon in the forest, and he passed away in the forest. This is to remind us that the Dharma starts with nature, and not nature in a sentimental way, a wilderness, a place that's dangerous. And even though the Buddha carried the Dharma into the centers of civilization of his time, it always kept that quality of coming from the wilderness. You see this primarily in his teaching on heedfulness. As he said, heedfulness encompasses all skillful qualities. It's the root of all skillful qualities. And it's good to keep that in mind. Whatever skillfulness we develop as we practice doesn't come from natural goodness. It comes from the realization that there are dangers, but the dangers can be avoided if you're careful. You have to pay extra careful attention to your actions. One of the main lessons of the forest is that you don't take any unnecessary risks. There's a story of Ishi, the last wild Indian in North America. When he finally left his home territory, went to live in a city, one of the first things they did was take him to a show. And in the show they had acrobats, and he got really upset at the acrobats, putting themselves into danger for no real reason at all, no, served no real purpose. As he explained, he'd been taught from a very early age that you don't go around performing stunts because you could hurt yourself, and then what are you going to do? There are no doctors around. And you become a burden on the rest of the tribe. I had a student who went up to Axel Heiberg Island one time. Actually, she went twice to do research for a degree. And she was the only person on the island, and she remembers the time the plane that dropped her off as it was flying away. She suddenly realized she was alone on the island. If she tripped, twisted an ankle, it would be a good 24, 36 hours before help could come. So she had to be very careful the whole time she was there. Each time she placed her foot, she wanted to be careful. Now these are lessons in looking after the safety of the body, but we transfer those lessons to the mind. You've got to be very careful about your mind. We live in comfortable surroundings here, and it's very easy to get careless. Always the feeling that well, if we get into trouble there will be people to help. But there do come times in life, especially toward the end. And you get more and more cut off from what anyone can do for you. If your hearing goes, if your eyesight goes, you're totally on your own. And if your mindfulness and alertness haven't been trained, they're going to have huge gaps. And where, where do you go in the gaps? Where you go into the ruts, whatever ruts the mind has been making for itself. And so when you're careless, you go through the day here, you say, well, I can think a few unskillful thoughts now and then as a reward for all that time I spent meditating. You're just putting more ruts in the mind so that when mindfulness lapses, that's where you're going to go. So you have to think about this. The places where your mind tends to go when it's not being skillful, that's where it's going to tend to go when there's a, a lapse in mindfulness. A lapse in alertness. Is that a place you really want to go? You have to take this seriously, because your mind is your most valuable possession. This too is something the Forest of Johns would talk a lot about, the very strong sense of refuge they developed as they stayed in the forest, surrounded by dangers. 
and realizing that the dangers that could happen to the body are nothing compared to the dangers that could happen to the mind. If death came, would they be ready to go? Would they be able to handle it well? And so they would think about the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. This is something the Buddha himself recommended when you're in the forest and you have fear for the dangers that you might find there. Think about the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. One is a way of just getting confidence, and two is a way of putting your mind in the right frame. So if anything did happen, you'd go well. So it's interesting to think about that. Other people take guns and things to protect themselves as they go in the forest. We take the mind, try to train the mind as our protection. Think of the qualities of the Buddha, his wisdom, his compassion, his purity. When you try to develop those qualities in yourself, that's what it means to really take refuge. Same with the Dharma. The Dharma is timeless. Well, you try to make your practice timeless. The Sangha, the practice well. Practice straightforwardly. Okay, you try to make your practice straightforward. Anything unskillful comes up in the mind, you don't say, well, I like this particular unskillful thought. I'll cherish this one for a while. Whatever comes up that's a threat to the safety of the mind, you've got to get rid of it. You've got to distance yourself from it and make that your basic reaction. So if you do find yourself in a position where it's time to go, you can go well, because you've developed good habits in the mind. So wherever you are, in the wilderness or not in the wilderness, it all comes back to being very heedful about the state of your mind. In the Buddhist list of blessings or protections, being heedful of the qualities of the mind is one of your best protections. That means taking seriously the principle of, of karma, okay? the thoughts that you have will lead to states of being. States of being in the mind will lead to states of becoming. States of becoming in the mind will lead to becoming on a large scale. It's there in the first verse of the Dhammapada. Mano bhubhangamantaman mano seta mano miya. All phenomena have the mind as their forerunner. The mind is their chief. They're made of mind. Who does the making? This process of becoming. These worlds that you create in the mind and the identities you take in those worlds. In what direction are they going? You've got to take this seriously. Not in a grim way, but be serious about it. I know a writer who spent some time up in Alaska with the natives there. He said there was a quality to them, that they were cheerful, but at the same time they were very... And then he listed a few of the words that they had in their language for this quality. He said he couldn't quite pin the word down in English. But the closest I can think of is heedful. Lived in a world where they knew they were dangerous, and help was not always nearby. Which means you have to create the help inside yourself. Make yourself your refuge. Make yourself the person you can depend on. That means being reliable. Each time something unskillful comes in the mind, you try to get rid of it. When something skillful comes, you try to develop it. You follow the duties of right effort. As the Buddha said, heedfulness lies at the base of all the strengths. Conviction, persistence, where persistence is right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, the discernment of right view and right resolve. Everything comes out of heedfulness. 
So always keep that quality uppermost in your mind. <laughs>